Okay, so uh, today we have with us Jack Forbes, uh, who is with the company called Pad Piper, as you can imagine. It's about uh, pads, right? Housing pads, yeah. Housing pads. <laughs> and But it's for specifically a certain group of people. Exactly, yeah. It's currently focused on students, especially on internships, uh, yeah. because it's something I struggled with myself. Oh. Yeah. Did you do your internship in the U.S.? I did. I actually did three in the San Francisco Bay Area and two in Vancouver, Canada. So two of the worst housing markets in the world. Oh, it's so expensive. Yeah, expensive and, you know, uh, just trying to book a space from really far away is not easy. You know, there aren't the best options that you can trust and, uh, you know, you can't visit the space beforehand you need it to be furnished because, you know, you're there for an internship and you don't want to have to furnish it yourself. Uh, you know, you need it for usually four months at a time, just a lot of criteria, and I didn't find any solution that was working. Isn't the Airbnb furnished? It is. Airbnb was definitely expensive for students. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so on the high side? High side, and, you know, you, you're you not always living with fellow students. You oh. could be living with kind of you know people you, you don't, don't know and maybe people you're not comfortable with. And they prefer with. to be with students. Exactly. Students prefer to live with students. Yeah. Oh, so how can you find households with just students? Yeah, so it's a great question. I mean, you know, it turns out there are a lot of interns in the world in North America specifically uh, you know, finding places somehow yeah and so you know we thought well instead of making it so difficult for them to find those um those landlords like through craigslist and whatnot let's get all of them on one platform that yeah. you know that you can target students yeah yeah get get the landlords on one platform where the students can more easily find those uh hosts to stay at and find a place that's you know a right fit for them maybe it's close to where they'll be working um you know School. Yeah, or maybe during school. Yeah, it's close to where they're at school. And also then, yeah. interns and students. Because exactly, yeah. Usually the interns are students just on an internship. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're currently focused on interns and expanding to students and just all young professionals uh, oh, soon. Oh, okay. Yeah. So as long as they meet the criteria, like between 22 to 30, it's still okay. Yeah, currently we make sure they, they are, are interns. Well, yeah, we make sure they're enrolled in a school that mm -hmm. we support. Mm -hmm. And if they do have that school email address, then, then we verify. It, it, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense to have them as an intern. Yeah. Okay. They usually required one year of internship. Um, actually, the internships are usually like three to six months long oh, that's all. and they actually happen all year and that's a kind of common misconception a lot of people think that internships are usually only the summer or yeah. maybe they think it's yeah just a year-long thing but um, these concepts of work integrated learning are growing rapidly throughout the world uh, from what we found about seven percent a year that work integrated learning programs are growing and what that means is basically internships are uh, woven into your academic career. So mm -hmm. I went to the University of Waterloo in Canada, yeah. and uh, I actually had six internships during my five-year program. Why six? Yeah, because they were built into the academic program, and we called it cooperative education. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's really great because during these internships, you can apply what you learn during school to an actual real work situation okay. and then vice versa okay yeah so so you did six three months or six six months six four month internships so that's 24 months yeah you get two years of work experience upon graduating wow yeah it, but that's not a requirement from the school uh it is actually uh for the university of waterloo you have to have at least five internships that many yeah and everyone in engineering has to has to, to have the five. Not necessarily with, with different companies. Uh, it doesn't have to be with different companies. Most uh, students choose to intern at different companies because this is, you know, your only chance in life where you can just try out a company for a few months. See if you like it. And you leave and there's no, you know, it doesn't look bad on your resume if oh, you've just tried because it. Because it was an internship. Exactly. Whereas once you go full time, 
if you start leaving companies after four months, I don't looks think... looks like you're hopping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a grasshopper. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you did your six internships in six different companies? My six were at six different companies. My very first one was actually uh, kind of my own thing, you yeah. know, trying to start a company with a classmate. Yeah. Uh, but after that, the next five were all at different companies. Oh, okay. And how did you find them? It's hard to find one, uh, let alone six. So, so did you get lucky? Well, the school helps a lot. Oh. So, yeah, with the University of Waterloo and a good number of schools, uh, especially in Canada, that have adopted cooperative education, the U.S. is starting to, to get to on know board. Yeah, um, the University of Waterloo has kind of a job um, board that companies can come and post the internships to, oh, okay, okay. and it's only accessible by University of Waterloo students. So we can easily just see what companies... And uh, you pick the one? Yeah, exactly. You throw your resume at however many you'd like, yeah. uh, you know, have a good number Is of... Is it usually of, very big companies? Uh, yeah, it's some of the biggest companies in the world. Um, Microsoft's actually a good example of a company that's been hiring Waterloo students for... Yeah, for decades, too. Uh, Microsoft has been um, hiring from Waterloo uh, since almost like day one. And wow. Bill Gates himself actually used to come to the campus to interview. And now... He's now, always uh, searching for interns. Exactly, yeah. And now it's kind of all the big tech companies, especially. Since the University of Waterloo is known for software engineering, yeah. now it's all the big ones like Google, Twitter, Facebook, Apple that hire interns from Waterloo. Yeah, and yeah. so they, when you say hire, only for the six months? Um, or, or then they keep them maybe, or they don't keep them maybe? Right. Yeah, so it's usually the four months at a time. Sometimes it's eight months, um, but uh, it's usually four months. Uh, with for some sure, of, for sure. Exactly, four and months for sure. And then if they decide to keep them, then they let you know, if, uh, they ask you if you want to stay. Yeah, if uh, once you go back to school after your internship, yeah. you can get a return offer for, for a full-time position. Yeah. Ah, oh, so that's a good deal. Yeah. There's, you get your foot in the door. Exactly. There have been a lot of uh, University of Waterloo students that end up in the Silicon Valley area because they graduated and had full-time offers. So there are a lot of Canadians in the San Francisco Bay Area now. Yeah, there are tons. Uh, <laughs> so d which one did you pick of the six? Um. So uh, I, I interned at a number of different companies. There was one that was a startup called Gumsticks in Redwood City. Yeah. Um, there was actually, so two in Vancouver. One of those was BC Hydro. Yeah. I tried project management at a utility company. Uh, I worked at uh, EA Sports, so I worked on online FIFA content, um, the game everyone loves. Uh, I worked at Zazzle in Redwood City, and finally I worked at uh, Google in um, Palo Alto. So th that kind of totaled my five, and then the one I did with a classmate. So you picked one, or you just started your own startup right away? That's a good question. So I actually chose a different company to start full-time at. Okay. I chose a company called Sequence in yeah. San Francisco, so. and they were a design development studio that was acquired by Salesforce. So I ended up at Salesforce and just left this last summer. Oh, because you had that brilliant idea? So the idea, that's a good question. Um, Pad Piper came about uh, during school, actually. So I kind of alluded to it earlier, but I struggled to find housing during all these internships. Um, yeah. You know, it really, there wasn't any solution that was working well for us. Craigslist, Airbnb, nothing was really that helpful. Oh. So this was actually my thesis project at the University of Waterloo. Okay. So for my final year of school, uh, I, I did this as a project and had such good feedback at the end of the year that... Uh, you said, let's go for it. Yeah, we said, let's go for it. And so October of 2016, uh, we launched an official version of the site. Pad Piper? Padpiper.com. Uh, so it's been live two years now. And uh, for a year and a half, we were just doing it in our spare time, trying to help as many students as we could until this summer we went full time with it. And are you have really a co founder excited. then? We, I have two co founders, uh, Zach and Courtney, and they are what make Pad Piper great. I am, oh. all I try and do is enable them to do their best because they are 
what has made Pad Piper what it is today. So did you actually design also the website? So that was my co-founder, Courtney. She did all the design. design. Yeah. And Zach uh, did almost all of the coding for it. So they truly have built Pad Piper. So they are software engineers, kind of? Uh, One software, one design, and I have done some software, yeah. Yeah, so you give them feedback. Uh, I mean, I I looked at the design, it's beautiful. I mean, it's so easy. So there's a sign for landlord and a sign for employer, Mm -hmm. like Salesforce. And then if you want to be a student, that you put your name in there, Exactly. Yeah, we tried to make it all as easy as possible for students to sign up, for landlords to list their space, and for employers to partner with us. We tried to make it easy, yeah. So who pays in this whole affair? I mean, is it like the employer pays? So it is the employer that pays, yeah. They uh, pay for usually a kind of premium experience for their interns, um, but the, the site is free for uh, interns for the interns because they're just starting in life they don't have money exactly okay that's our fundamental goal that we're really passionate about is uh, really making things affordable for these students since yeah. you know and it's free exactly it's free for students free for landlords oh. there aren't even any fees on payments through the site so landlords can receive security deposits and rent all for free since the employers pay us yeah (laughs) so so the employees is happy uh, to find you to help you find also uh, interns well yeah so we've definitely noticed with the employers it makes their um, internship job offer more competitive for sure oh we work with um, uh, what is it called pad piper yeah and not only we're going to give you an internship we're going to give you a pad (laughs) exactly yeah they'll guarantee housing for their interns we you know, support their interns throughout that entire duration, and uh, we even help their interns find uh, suitable housemates. Yeah, so yeah, so if, if they don't have to be from the same university. They don't, no. Okay. And that's one of the great things, is that you start to meet uh, students. students from all over during these internships. Yeah, they come from India, from Australia, yeah. and, they, and they meet on the same path. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, but sometimes there is an adult there. I mean, uh, an older adult who kind of manage the the house, but most of the others are students. Yeah. So in some situations, the um, spaces on Pad Piper involve the host living there. Right. Which you know actually we've found. Normal. Yeah, we we found some interns prefer that kind of situation. Some interns like having. A host there because they act as that kind of adult figure okay. to teach the interns, you know, life. <laughs> yeah, how do I do laundry? How do I cook? You know, they can answer common questions that you like kind of take for granted. Like where is shopping? Where is this? Where is exactly. that? Exactly. How do I do transportation? Yeah. So really, anyone with a spare bedroom yeah. uh, can host on Pad Piper. Yeah, and then, but it's better to have two bedrooms so there's at least two students. That can be nice, yeah, yeah. And then if you have an entire space that you don't live at, that works great too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be good. Uh, I mean, maybe a landlord travels a lot and he uh, just rents the rooms and then comes back to check if those students are behaving. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I think that's something we've found interesting is, you know, we started this because we struggled with this as interns. Between the three of us co-founders, we had 15 internships. Wow. But what we noticed as soon as we started was that uh, landlords actually really like this idea of monthly consistent rentals. Um, We've heard a lot of complaints from landlords about, you know, the short term kind of renting. Uh, They, you know, have to devote so much time to managing the space they can never go on vacation Mm -hmm. and then long term um, you really can't kind of make as much income from your rental so with pad piper they can make more through these monthly rentals than if they did annual leases uh, but they don't have to spend as much time managing their space Mm. like with shorter terms that's that's a a good strategy i'm sure landlord like it better because they don't have to deal forever with the same person Exactly. And they don't have to be stuck with the 
unwanted tenants. Exactly. Yeah. It's so they know he's gonna leave in four months if they don't like it. Exactly. And there aren't any problems with squatters, which yeah. can be an issue because yeah. these students are always going back to their school after the internship. Okay. Um, we so far haven't seen any um, students on Pad Piper actually stay at the space because they all go back to school. And you know the landlords can go on vacation during the four that months. Time? Yeah, they and can. And then take a new intern when he gets back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that is the perfect uh, solution for them. And uh, when you sign up um, uh, an employer, uh, what kind of condition you give them? You have to um, send us part of your interns, some of your, int or all of your interns, or is it open? We keep it as easy going as possible. So okay. yeah, we only they don't have an exclusive just with you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we you know kept it as flexible as possible for the employer. They yeah. only pay us for interns that ultimately choose to live at to a go space. On that type. Yeah, and they can send all their interns our way. And if only half of them decide to live at a space that's on Pad Piper, that's they're right. only charged for those half. Yeah. Okay, that gives them freedom yeah so they're gonna send some to their friends and some to you exactly yeah okay sounds <laughs> good sounds good i'd like to do um the interview in french i know you are canadian oui je parle un peu de français okay so <laughs> you're gonna tell us uh for the my french audience what is by the uh, by oh the <laughs> oh <laughs> en français no i i uh, I know you cannot translate Pad okay, okay. Piper. Yeah. Donc, uh, comment tu appellerais ça en français? Pad Piper aussi? Eh oui, Pad Piper. C'est le nom, c'est le nom. Oui. <laughs> so, Piper means like a, a, so, route, a route. Yeah, this is a great question. So, <laughs> Donc, on va essayer de faire en français, j'ai oublié. <laughs> Je ne sais pas aussi. Mm -hmm. uh, so, en français ou? Comme tu veux. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can do this one in French, but... Pad Piper, uh, the name came from the show Silicon Valley, which uh, is a pretty funny show on HBO. Okay. Yeah, and um, uh, in the, the show, the name of the company that stars in the show is Pied Piper. Oh. So we kind of made a little joke about Pied Piper and instead uh, called it Pad Piper. Hmm. Yeah. What was the name of the show before? Um, in the show, the, the name of the company is Pied Piper. Pied. Yeah. Okay. And Pied. Pied Piper is an old tale. Mm. Uh, it's about someone who has like a fiddle and mice come and visit them as they play. And it's, it's an odd and story. And you get the idea. Well, I mean, the, in the show, that's what they name their company after. And so, you know, as a joke, almost because of the show, we called ourselves Pad Piper to be similar to Pied yeah, Piper. Yeah. Piper, like Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> an odd name. Yeah. Okay, so that's funny way of finding a name. It's and plus it's happy. It's a happy name. Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's musical. It's almost musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm happy to discuss a little bit of uh, how I um, grew up with French. If you, I can do a little portion in French if you oh, like. Okay. Yeah. Donc on va essayer de parler en français. Donc, vous êtes le fondateur d'une compagnie qui s'appelle Pad Piper. Et c'est une compagnie qui essaie de placer des internes. Des... Oui, oui. Et euh, je suis canadien, donc euh, j'ai parlé français quand j'étais euh, jeune, jeune euh, 6, 7, 8 et 9 ans. Oui. Euh, mais euh, j'allais aux États-Unis quand euh, je dis ans. Donc, les États-Unis ne parlent beaucoup de français, c'est euh, l'espagnol. Euh, et j'ai parlé un peu de français quand j'ai euh, 11, 12 et 13, mais pas beaucoup. Ah, d'accord. Donc, mais tu parles bien. Ah, merci. <rire> oui. oui, je te comprends bien. Tu n'hésites pas trop. Ça va. Oui, oui. <rire> Donc, tu es Canadien. Tu es né où? À Mississauga, Canada. Mississauga. Oui. C'est du côté d'où? De, de l'est? Uh, oui, uh, Toronto. Toronto. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, c'est une grande ville, Toronto, non? Mais oui. Combien d'habitants? Un, une mille... Un ou, million? Eh, plus, plus. Plus? Oui. Uh, 
ou je ne sais pas euh, 13 000 13 et 13 000 mm. voilà. 13 millions oui c'est si grand que ça euh, oui c'est c'est grand c'est vrai qu'il y a au Canada euh, 8 millions de Français ah oui et au Québec il y a 8 millions oui um, 30 uh, au tu Canada mais um, 8 millions de uh, Français. Au Québec? Oui, oui, oui. D'accord. Donc, tu habitais avec beaucoup... Tu, tu, avais, tu étais autour de Français? Beaucoup de Français? Um, un Pas peu. C'est uh, un demi. Uh, quand, La moitié. Quand je... Donc, tout est en français et en anglais quand tu sors? Oui, quand je... Uh, 6, 7, 8 et 9 ans, mais... Uh, à 10 et 11, c'est plus uh, d'anglais. Ah, d'accord. Yeah. Non, mais quand, je, euh, quand tu sors dans la rue et il y a des signes, c'est en français et en anglais. Oui, oui. Uh, c'est bilingue. Oui, oui. Uh, c'est uh, mm, bon. one of the few countries in the world that is officially bilingual. bilingual. Mm. Oui. Mais ils essayent de pousser le français là-bas. Um, Mm. Uh, they push French more over there. Uh, Not really. I mean, uh, yeah, all the kind of speeches and whatnot are half and half, but uh, I don't think they push you toward okay. one or the other. Yeah. Donc, uh, quand tu es dans les premières classes à l'école, ils font moitié anglais, font moitié français. Oui. Et après, tu, tu décides. Ah uh, oui. Uh, uh, 11 et 12. Tu dis, je veux qu'en anglais. Oui, euh, c'est anglais. C'est normal, normal oui. Oui, oui. Parce que c'est un niveau beaucoup plus élevé. Il faut vraiment avoir une langue qu'on parle couramment. Oui. oui. D'accord. <rire> D'accord. Tu es allé en France ou pas encore Non, à ma soeur, mais pas moi. <rire> ah, d'accord. Tu as envie d'aller um, Do you wish you could go Oh, oui. Mm. <rire> Enfin, tu pourras même améliorer le français là-bas. Uh, you can uh, improve your French there. Oui, ma soeur okay. uh, parle Couramment. beaucoup de fran français, oh. mais pas moi. Uh, yeah. uh, J'ai allé aux États-Unis à 10 ans, donc ce n'est pas beaucoup de français. Mais que tu as des internes, des, des étudiantes de Waterloo, uh, Toronto, peut-être qu'il faudrait faire ton site uh, bilingue. Ah, uh, um, un peu des... En français et en anglais Oui. Parce que beaucoup voudraient peut-être euh, montrer à leurs parents qu'ils parlent français ou pour d'autres raisons. Yeah, most of our spaces right now are... I know, it's all in English. Yeah, but we will be uh, expanding to the kind of Montreal, more French-speaking areas soon, so... So you can do a section in French? Yeah, oh yeah, and translate the whole page, okay, the whole like, website. Yeah. I, I see some website that says French, English, click here, click here, oh, whatever yeah. whatever language you want. Yeah. Uh, I, I've seen that in many bilingual uh, websites. Yeah, and we hope to do a good job of that uh, as we have more resources. Oh, sure. sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's a lot of investment on your part and your co-founders. Yeah. Uh, so your co-founders, I assume, already, uh, they also do it full time? Um, yes, yeah, all three of us are full-time, uh, and uh, we are currently in a startup accelerator okay. uh, called WeFunder XX. Oh. It's a fun one. It's uh, The XX stands for uh, the female chromosomes that are XX because it's a female founder conference, uh, uh, accelerator. The refiner, okay. Yeah, um, and... You are with the refiners? No. No. It's um, called what? WeFunder XX okay. is the name of the accelerator, and we're actually uh, going to be doing another accelerator this winter. Okay, because the WeFinders is French, you know. Oh, They're oh. They're right here south of Market. Oh, yes, our WeFunder. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little different. A little bit different, yeah. Yeah. So they, they help you kind of speed up the process? Yeah, provide resources, uh, you know, help you connect with the companies that are also in your batch. Okay. And, um, yeah. But uh, as, as a company, you need also legal advice a little bit? 
paperwork advice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, disclosure advice, mm -hmm. things like that. And then once you have that in place, then it's like uh, agreement, sign here, docu sign online. <laughs> yeah. And then you're, you're, you're rolling. Yeah. And they also provide some funding as well. Oh, they do? They do, yeah. And oh. they just take, you know, a relatively small percentage of equity for that. Funding. Oh, they do provide them. Yeah, so, which is really nice. Ah, so yeah. you do have investors already? Um, technically, they invested on what's called a safe. Ah. So it's a simple agreement for future equity. Okay. And it basically means we um, haven't done like an official round of funding, okay. but they've given us some money. And when we do an official round, they will have equity. Oh, okay, okay. So, so basically, they are your main sponsors now? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Once you uh, saturate the United States, then you can go further. Yeah. So right now it's Canada, United States. Exactly. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I think the next stop will probably be the UK. Oh. Uh, but yeah, definitely focused on North America for now. Because there are also some French interns. Mm -hmm. So there's, I am always uh, students from France always reach out to me and they say. Can I do an internship with French American teaching? I say, well, uh, maybe if you want, come yeah. in. You know, if you want to just learn. We've actually had some French interns find housing through Pad Piper, uh, mostly from France. From word of mouth and just from word of mouth. Um, maybe they find us on Google. Yeah. And they say, uh, I'm going to come to America. Can you help me find a place? Yeah, I mean, uh, what's great is that with the website, they can actually find it themselves. We oh. don't actually have to, you know, hop on a call with each student. Uh, so oh, you mean sense. I can go on the website and find what the pads are Exactly, available? yeah. Oh. You can search yourself. Oh, so for example, San Francisco, you have a little bit in the Potrero, a little bit in the Mission. Yeah. A little bit in whatever district they want. Exactly. Is mostly there? mostly around Soma and Fidei since... Oh, where the schools and The companies, companies. yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, that Primarily. makes sense. Yeah. So you prefer right now Soma? Um, so we actually have spaces all over San Francisco. Uh, okay. The interns tend to work in Soma and Fidei, okay. so they, you know, usually like to live close by, but, you know, plenty live in yeah, Mission, Petrero, Noe. They just commute. Exactly, yeah. And you mentioned something about South Bay. Are you going to develop the South Bay too? We actually are already do have listings in the, in South, the South Bay. Bay. Yeah. For students who go to a company at Google, for example. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Uh, Google, all the ones, Tesla, plenty of companies down yeah, there. In the Silicon Valley. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. That's where all the tech are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they all need engineers from Waterloo. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why, you know, engineers uh, are kind of, I guess, what we help the most right now. But we're excited to eventually help all young yeah, professionals. Yeah, I heard that the United States is the biggest import of engineers. Yeah. Yeah. Like whether they're French, whether they're Canadian, whether they're Indian, whatever. Mm -hmm. They just, they don't have enough engineers. Yeah. A lot of these big tech companies that are just getting bigger, so they're they, hiring more and more. They don't care where they come from. Oh, exactly. Well, I think that's great, right? Like immigrants, I think, uh, in many it's, cases, could be better um, engineers than locals because... You know, they because they know they have to prove themselves to stay. That, they can have a unique perspective on things that locals maybe don't have. Oh, yeah, that's I, true. Yeah, I think immigrants are, are really great employees in general. Yeah, and you pay them a little bit less than Americans. Uh, yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and what's good about them is that they might bring ideas from their countries. Is that what it is? Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, just having a unique perspective on the it's world, very it's really important. And I think, you know, it's especially helpful in design, but even in software engineering, okay. I've seen it's uh, of great use to companies. Yeah, they were trained differently. Exactly. Yeah. Do you find that some, I mean, I know you don't know, but do companies find that uh, interns, let's say from China, are much faster workers? Um, that's a good question. I mean, definitely, uh, yeah, I guess Chinese software engineers are kind of known to be faster, but I've also yeah. heard the quality isn't as good at, at times. So, okay. 
you know, if I think it's usually if you're hiring a team that's there and you're trying to communicate with them internationally, it can be difficult. Whereas I'm sure in China, uh, a lot of these Chinese employees at the companies are probably really great coders that, you know, they uh, go fast. Yeah, but they definitely do move quickly for sure. <laughs> okay, so yeah. so no, because I heard that they are advanced in mathematics. Then, like, like once they reach university level, the their level is way above the university level of here. Mm -hmm. So once they start coding, wow, they're like ten years ahead of the American person who's just learning still mathematics. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen. Uh, yeah, a lot of people that grew up in China are a lot more talented when it comes to mathematics, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they have a strict mathematical uh, uh, program. Yeah, yeah. The Chinese government seems to have yeah implemented Impro that early. Uh, improve. I mean, enforce that. Exactly. Early on. Is it the same with Japanese or no? That's a good question. I think similar, but they're definitely not known for it as much. Yeah, it's uh, mostly the Chinese that are known for that. Yeah. <laughs> this is a big plug for China. China. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but it turned out that way. Yeah. But it's it's reputation. It's all about reputation. Your company is also going to have a reputation. Oh, go to Pat Piper. They're great. Or don't go to Pat Piper. <laughs> they really suck. Exactly. I mean, they really don't have good pads. Yeah. So it's up to you to build up that that brand that is good exactly and i think Would our you screen the the owners we do yeah so every uh landlord that lists their space on pad piper yeah. has to uh, uh provide proof of ownership of that property they have to upload a uh, government issued id uh, yeah. of themselves that yeah. matches that ownership uh, information they have to upload a profile picture they have to uh, verify their phone number yeah. so we make them go through a lot of these steps to really create this uh, trust in this community that we're building because that's the biggest thing, right? Like to differentiate us from like a Craigslist, for example, we need to be a trustworthy space that students can go to find housing. And uh, we kind of have that at the core of Pad Piper. Yeah, you don't, you don't just accept any. Exactly, yeah. So what do you do? You go in person? No. It's a good question. In some cases, yeah, I, I will uh, meet the landlord in person and visit their space. I've actually even see if they're nice. Yeah, I've even taken pictures of their space for them before and put them on the site. Um, yeah, you know, it's and make sure it's a happy environment for the student. They don't want to have a negative experience in a foreign country. Exactly. So it's all very important: uh, the environment, the landlord who is on site and uh, the students who are already there, you know, yeah. things like that. Yeah, and, you know, in regard to, like you said, uh, making sure Pad Piper is somewhere, y you know, people will want Word to go out, yeah. and, and, yeah, want to refer fellow uh, students yeah. or landlords, yeah. that's kind of why our mission is at the core of Pad Piper. Like, we are on a mission to empower all young professionals to find a place they can call home. Okay. And we really live by that, and... Uh, you know, it, we struggled with this ourselves, and so that's partly why we're so passionate about this. Okay. Uh, but really making sure that every decision we make is toward that mission is really important. Okay, and the landlords are supposed to send you pictures and maybe references? Yeah, so landlords can upload pictures directly to the site okay. as they list their space, so that it can all be as easy as possible for okay. them. And then um, maybe have a couple students say, yeah, this is a great place. Yeah, yeah, uh, we have reviews, exactly, so that students can say, yeah, I enjoyed living here, here's my review, mm -hmm. uh, here are the different categories, so, you know, maybe um, the location was great, uh, maybe the cleanliness was great, but then, you know, this other aspect could have been a little bit... Transportation was good. Yeah, yeah, so we let them uh, review based on all those categories. Okay, so there is a review kind of... Exactly. Oh, okay. Helps build that sense of trust as well. Oh, yeah. Right. So sounds good. Is there something I missed? I mean, what is, uh, I mean, you are two years around. I yeah. I've been two years and you started just with word of mouth, uh, people you knew, um, some companies you offered your services to, and now you're growing. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're growing. Uh, 
primarily focused on the San Francisco Bay Area and Toronto right now, yeah. but we're excited to expand that to the kind of major cities in North America that have a lot of internships. Uh, so some of those include, you know, Seattle, Vancouver, New York, um, Los Angeles even. So we're excited to grow to those cities, but currently trying to make sure we do a great job of helping interns in the San Francisco Bay Area and Toronto. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of startups, uh, we think it's they are overnight success, but it takes time to build it up. Oh, yeah. You got to do your first city right, and then do the second one. Number. Exactly. So it's just like longer than you know, people think. Exactly. And I think a lot of young people these days, especially, don't really get that full perspective of how hard it will be because you tend to only see the successes in the news. Mm -hmm. You don't see media coverage on, you know, how the, hard it was. Yeah. Or the like thousands of companies that have failed. You only see all the success stories of Instagram that built to a billion dollar company company with you know, a few dozen people or WhatsApp who sold for billions with mm. just a few people. You only read about those. But once you do start a company, you really realize uh, everything that could go wrong will go wrong. Mm. And it's a battle to continue to build and grow and sustain. Yeah. Yeah. Even big uh, startups, I mean, big companies like Uber and Lyft, they do have problems. They had people killed in the car. They had rapes they had all kinds of things they have to deal with that exactly so and then they have all these lawsuits to deal with i know they're billion dollar companies but they still have to deal with that oh yeah that with those companies they go through uh, what some people call hyper growth yeah and hyper growth is essentially you know Too taking fast. on yeah thousands of employees a year that they're growing at growing at hundreds of percents a year in company size yeah. that is just really hard to sustain and you know, in some cases, they kind of don't have a choice if they want to uh, compete in, in the global uh, industry they're in. But, you know, the, doing it right is difficult. Yeah, I even heard some scandals on Airbnb. Mm -hmm. I mean, you heard about those too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, they really pay out real quick so that it shuts off, you know, so it doesn't go public you yeah. know, on the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. So, but they try to also take measures so it doesn't happen again. Mm hmm. And, you know, I think we are also fortunate to uh, be coming after a number of these companies that have learned from those mistakes. And you learned from theirs. Exactly. So that we can make sure not to go through the same mistakes. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to go through these headaches. So. Exactly. So, yeah. So, like, there's so many measures you have to take. Yeah, so you have to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it looks like you have the energy to do that. You're still young and you 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 know what you're doing and and you had you it was your experience to and your co-founder's experience to look for internship for uh, a pad to stay at and so you 15 tryout from all three of you it should give you a sense of what to look for exactly yeah all three of us were in cooperative education that concept of work integrated learning yeah, so, so it's not like a guy who comes in and say i want to be a co-founder exactly it's somebody who actually was in the trenches and mm -hmm. learned all those things yeah we we went through the difficulties ourselves and are also just really passionate about the concept of work integrated learning like we really do think this is going to be a huge global phenomena that it's taking its time for certain universities to adopt. But I think we're, we're getting to that point where uh, higher education throughout the world is going to have this concept of uh, work directly integrated to academics so students can learn by doing. And, you know, some schools like the University of Waterloo are doing a good job of that. Drexel University is another good example. Um, but we're just kind of starting to see other schools, especially in the U.S., start to adopt it. Yeah, the good news is engineering students, uh, what harm could they do? I mean, that's a good reference already that you are an engineer. Mm -hmm. I mean, how they're usually educated. They usually have a degree. Uh, so they you already kind of they already self screened by the university. Yeah, exactly. That's I so think you're not taking like a roommate off the street. You're taking someone who has actually made its uh, its mark in a university. It's a great point. I think that's another one of the kind of value props we've realized landlords really like about Pad Piper is that 
uh, the students are vetted by both their university and the company. So to get into that university alone, it was hard. It was hard to get an internship at that company was even harder in some cases. So they so, already screened. Exactly, and we've definitely found yeah landlords really like that they can already trust these okay. tenants. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so, so the only thing is to trust the landlord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which that's where we try and step in and, and you step in build that. that trust. Okay, it was yeah. wonderful to talk to you. you you're, you're a great uh, uh, interview uh, <laughs> person to interview. Ah, merci beaucoup. De rien. Et je te souhaite beaucoup de succès. Ah, merci. Et j'espère uh, ce que tu vas avoir uh, opening... Uh, Celebration ou pas encore? Uh, pas encore. Okay. Oui, oui, oui. Donc, euh, <rire> je, je garde le contact avec toi et puis voilà, euh, je, je suis sûre que ça va marcher. Merci <rire> beaucoup. Merci Aline.